an interruption to our regularly scheduled events. You guys remember that? Yes. yes. I could have planned that. And we talked in Joel that, that when we call out to God, sometimes the uh, resistance, the fighting in our life that we see is actually not the enemy. It could be God in our life resisting us and calling us to humble ourselves and return to Him. And when we do, in Joel, there's this beautiful picture of restoration, right? Mm -hmm. That there was a prophecy of Joel that the locusts had eaten and torn up everything and, and just destroyed, and they were everywhere, and destruction was everywhere. And the, the word of the Lord to the people was to turn to God. And He said when they did, when, when they rendered their hearts before the Lord, man, there was restoration. And everything was returned to them. And everything was glorious. And then, there was a promise that the Holy Spirit would come. Amen. And He would be outpoured on what? On the old and the young. I like that for our church. I'm like, yeah, all, every, everybody, all flesh it says. On the important people, on the nobodies. So this week, in line with that, I just want to talk about what it looks like to pursue the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What does it look like to be on pursuit? What does it look like to go after it? What does it look like to drink of the Spirit? What, what is that going to look like? You know, I just, I love the Word of God. I love Bible study time. And I love, but I love the Spirit's interaction with us on a regular basis. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for that. Like I'm like, yeah, like I just don't want ordinary. That's I'm right. kind of a weird guy. I'm kind of a loud guy, right? You guys all know that. But I just, I mean, like the spirit of God when He gets a hold of our lives, mm -hmm. it radically shifts. So this morning, that's what we're going to talk about. Recently, I've been in pursuit of of new things, the new year. I was reminded recently around Christmas time. I went, uh, we went down to Kentucky, and one of my, one of Rachel's cousins offered me a free bearded dragon. I know some of you guys aren't excited about that. <laughs> but I was, like, super excited that she had this, like, foot-long bearded dragon that uh, she's like, hey, uh, you can have a cage, you can have, have food supply. And we told her, oh, well, it would increase our rent. And she said, well, I'll pay, I'll pay the increase in your rent. You know, here's the bearded dragon. It's all up to Rachel, you know, like, Rachel, can we have this? And she, you know, again said, well, not, not yet. Uh, but I was reminded then of my, my love for saltwater fish. When I was in middle school, I just loved saltwater fish. And I had a, a principal who had this big 600-gallon tank, I don't know if it was humongous, in his living room. And I just sit there and watch all the fish uh, go by. And so, like, since the beginning of the year, all of my YouTube feed right now is like all saltwater fish. Like it's like just tons of it, right? When you when you're in pursuit of something and when you like really want to 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 get a hold of something, learn something new, or like go after something, right? You're like you're like searching, right? You're searching it here, you're reading, you're talking to your friends. What can I what can I get a hold of? How can I learn more? How can I get into it, right? And we're gonna see today as we are in pursuit of this outpouring of the Holy Spirit with that, that same, I would think even a greater tenacity than going after saltwater fish aquariums and what that looks like, but with that same kind of passion and tenacity, that's what it's going to take, that's what it's going to require, that's what God is asking us. He's like, pursue me, get all that I have for you, get it all. And when we do, it's just this beautiful picture of what a spirit-filled life looks like. And so we're going to look at that in Ephesians chapter 5 today. But with the backdrop of that the Holy Spirit, that God decides when we turn to Him, when we call on Him, this Joel backdrop, right, that there's going to be an outpouring of the Spirit on all people. So we know that we've received the Holy Spirit. But let's look at Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to look in verse 18 through 21. Ephesians chapter 5, 18 through 21, it says, And do not get drunk with wine, for this is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melodies 
to the Lord in our heart, giving things always and for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Man, I love this, this look of the Holy Spirit. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, man, we're like joyous people. Man, we're like singing songs. It's like it's like high school musical, or I, I like I like listening to watching some Bollywood videos, right? It's like music is just flowing from us spontaneously because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Man, we're, we're giving thanks. We're, we're people of full of gratitude. We're people submitting to one another. We're, we're humble people. We're going to examine that further. But the biggest question here is, is, how do I get this Holy Spirit? How do I get filled? And he uses this parallel here to getting drunk. I've been around a few uh, drunk people, and some things that I know is you either have to drink lots, or you have to drink strong. Either way, you know, right? Uh, I've been around college students, they drink a lot. And, and they, it affects their whole being. I never, I've never seen a drunk, a drunk person that does not affect like, their speech, the way they walk, the way they move, the way they think, right? The, the, everything about them changes. But there's even more about this parallel that, that Paul brings up here in Ephesians. Not just the, the effects saying, oh, and don't be full of wine, but be full of the Holy Spirit, is the effects of the thing, but there's a comparison, there's a direction and a rebuke to the, to the church at this point. In the, in the temple of the other gods, in the, in the area, it was common for them to try to conjure up their spirit through dan wild dance and, and then drunkenness in order to have this spiritual uh, ecstatic state. And so, the instructions here for the church is comparison also brings instruction and bring rebuke. Don't be like the world that goes after worldly things, man-made things, to get the things of God. Don't go after worldly things to get the things of God. Be full of His Spirit. Don't be full of wine. Oftentimes I find when I'm instructing and walking with people that have gone to worldly things, earthly things, man-made things, to get the thing that God wants to give to them through His Spirit. And the challenge this morning as we think about what does it look like or how do we pursue the Spirit is also a moment to examine our lives. What things are we pursuing after to get what God desires to fulfill and to give us through His Spirit. There's habits that we have in our lives, pursuing of peace, pursuing of satisfaction, pursuing of wholeness, and just pursuit of companionship. All these things, I would encourage you again, can be found in Christ Himself. I remember when I was talking with uh, university students and PhD students, they were, they were saying, oh man, when I go to sleep at night, I can't go to sleep at night without drinking a little wine because I, 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 I can't find peace. Uh, there's no other thing that I can go to to, to gain peace and so I could just settle my mind down. And I said, I, I instructed them, I said, that Jesus offers us peace and he says that he brings a peace that passes all understanding and you're getting caught up in this wine and you're getting caught up in this substance and you're getting caught up in this man-made thing when Jesus is offering you something, if you turn to Him, He will give you that peace that you desire. And so part of this is a little bit of comparison, but it's a correction. And, and I hope that we would also heed that this morning, examining ourselves and saying, all right, in, in this pursuit of the Holy Spirit, what other things in my life am I pursuing? And, and is this pursuit of the Holy Spirit, and, and am I willing to replace it with the thing that I'm going after? God has more for us. Right? We know that. I mean, I'm like preaching to the choir a little bit, but I just want to feel like, right? God has more for us Amen. than any earthly pursuit that we're after. How shall we then be filled with the Holy Spirit? We must drink of the Spirit. Then I say, okay, well, Andrew, how do you how do you do that? First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse thirteen. We were all made to drink of one spirit, one spirit, the Holy Spirit. We were all made to drink, to serve after, to cling to, to. We're all made one spirit. Jesus said 
this, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. John says this, uh, in reference to that quote that Jesus, John says this in uh, John chapter 7, verse 37 and 39, that, that what Jesus had just talked about, what, what he had just mentioned, he was saying that of the Spirit. Those who are thirsty. Last night we had a time of prayer. Again, I was, uh, I mean, overwhelmed with this worship. We were in, in this gathering in our living room and we just began to worship. And, and then all of a sudden, I, I, it dawned on me, the Holy Spirit brought it to me. Like, we're here just satisfied. Right, the, the Spirit of God, I mean, it was just full of peace. It was, it was so full of joy. And there's this contrast. I'm sitting in the middle of my living room in this apartment building, and, and all around me there are people that are unsatisfied. They don't know what it's like to be satisfied in Christ, the Spirit of God. The Jesus says that it, if you believe on me, if you have me, then you have my Spirit. You will thirst, but you will no longer be thirsty. It is the Spirit that you drink of. And then, then I'm thinking for this, uh, the body, how, how, how then can we drink? How, how then can we drink? How then can I pursue? What does it look like to pursue after the Holy Spirit? An all-out life dedicated to getting more of what God has for me, getting more of His Spirit. Those who live according to the Spirit, Romans 8, 5 says, those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. We set our minds on the Spirit, it changes our pursuit. What are we searching for? What are we getting after? Holy Spirit, uh, I, wanna, I want the things of you, God, the prophecies and the healings and the miracles, God, and the song and, and the peace. And I want to set my mind on those things. I want to set my mind on the things of the Spirit. And when I set my mind on it, when I change my direction, when I'm determined that I'm going to receive it, it changes my pursuit. It, it changes how I walk my life. It changes what I do. It changes how I spend my time, right? It, it changes what I read at night. It changes what I listen to. It, it changes because when I set my mind on the things of God, it changes my pursuit. Colossians 3, 1 and 2, it says that we should seek the things that are above and set our mind on the things that are above. How do we pursue? How do we drink of the Spirit? Man, we set our goal, we set our eyes on, we fixate on the Spirit of God, we fixate on Christ Himself, we fixate on the kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. We, we focus on these things. Seeking it, we direct our attention toward it. We're concerned of it. Philippians chapter 3, 19, right? We're concerned about the things that are above. We are taken up with it. What kind of things in our life are we taken up by? When I, got, when I started getting more fish YouTube videos and, uh, and worship songs, and, oh, yeah, I've, been changing, I've been changing my direction. So drinking of the Spirit would mean that we would seek the things of the Spirit, we would direct our attention towards these things of the Spirit, that we would be devoted to them, that we would set our mind on, we would plan our day around, I mean, our week, all right, Friday night, who's going to be here Friday night for prayer? We, we change, changes how we spend our time when we think, oh, I've got to get more of you. What is life about? But that we would be unified with the Father and His Spirit. What is life about that we would spend our eternity in awe and in worship of the Father? There really is nothing else. There's no other worthy pursuit. There's no other gain. There's no other thing. There's, no, there's nothing else that, that is all rubbish in comparison to the riches of the Spirit, in comparison to having union with the Father, in comparison to being one with Him, nothing else. And that's why we can say, like Paul, right? Paul, he, he went through shipwreck, and he went through destruction, and he, he, he went through all these things, and, and he didn't care about earthly things. It, was, it didn't matter to him. It weighed nothing, really. I mean, it was, I am 
in one with the Father. I'm doing His work. It's for His glory, right? And, and if we are people that want to be in pursuit of the Father, we must drink of His Spirit. We must set our mind on His things. And the benefit, we, we looked at that in Ephesians, we're going to get back to that, right? What it looks like then when we receive His Spirit. Life is extraordinary. Life is full of Him. Life is wonderful. Kind of joked a little bit about the Bollywood thing at the, at the beginning, but I mean, I love that. Like, just like random songs just bursting out in the middle of a, in the middle of the movies. I don't know if you've watched them before, but I mean, that is, when I look at Ephesians 5 again, I mean, that's what it looks like. We're just full of joy. We're just, we just can't stop singing about how good God is and how, how praiseworthy He is. It's just so exciting. our mind on these things. Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 63, he says, my words that I have spoken to you are the spirit and life. This man, new year, we're starting, how many started a new Bible plan, right? We all did that, right? And then we started again, I'm going to do it this year, right? Get through all the ones, check it. Check mark it all. The version is awesome. It reminds me how behind I am already. Um, <laughs> But these words, what does it look like to drink of the Spirit? What does it look like to receive all? Man, consume His Word. Jesus says, my words are Spirit and their life. Drink of it. It's here for us. It's, it's not for lack of access that we have lack of His Spirit. That's right. I mean, in, in anything... How abundant is the access to the things of God that we have? Mm. To His Word, to, to worship, to, man, beautiful, instrumental, uh, unctioning into the, the, the presence of God. I mean, there's no lack of access. The question, though, where is our heart? Where is our pursuit? Where is our attention? Because it's here for us. This outpouring of the Holy Spirit that, that Joel said, I mean, that the time that we're living, this is now. His Holy Spirit is for us. Setting our minds on the Spirit is directing our eager attention to Jesus. If we do this, we will be filled, and we will be drunken in His Spirit. We'll be an addict, it will be a good thing. We can't get enough of it. I mean, I mean, we, I know I have some people that have walked with the Lord for a while, right? I mean, when you get more of the Lord, it's like you want to go back, right? Some of you guys went to the IHOP conference. You're like, yeah, I mean, like, I spent time in the presence of God, and I, I want to get, I want to get to that point again. I, I can't wait to get back to the Word of God. I can't wait to meet with the people of God. I can't wait to sing a little another song. I, I just, I, I just can't get enough. Instead of a chemical dependency, we will develop a dependency on His Spirit. Oh, when we God. begin to shift our focus and shift our attention and shift our pursuit to get more of the Spirit and all that God has for us. The Father, the Holy Spirit, isn't a drink. He is a person. We must remember this. And Jesus, he, he, he tells us in Luke 11, He reminds us about this. In Luke 11, verse 13, it says this, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Spirit of, uh, sorry, will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who what? To those who ask Him. That's right. What's the key? What's the, what, Andrew, what, what makes this pursuit work? What, how, not in my own flesh, not in my own efforts, not in that I checked off all the things on you, uh, you version, even though I believe that's a good thing that it adds to our, 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 our gathering and our getting of His Spirit. How do we get it? Where does it start? We ask, Father, I desire Your Spirit. Or maybe we can even start with, God, change my heart that I desire the things from you more than the things of this earth. God, I desire it. God, I want it. And it says that God's a good Father. Yes. He wants to give these good things to us. He wants to fill us with your, His Spirit. He, he wants us to experience this peace and this joy. He, he, he desires that we would prophesy, that we would be used in healing, that we would be 
used to me is give me. He desires it. He wants it for us. And he says, John, John, I mean, Luke 11 says, I mean, he says, ask.
being full of the Spirit, it, it eliminates grouchiness and grumbling and depression and worry and self-pity. It, it, it eliminates these things out of our life because we, we're receiving exactly what we need from Him and, and we're drinking of Him and we're satisfied and all of a sudden our whole lives change. And I can't help but after thinking about all this and, 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 and looking at this Word, I, I can't help but just say, hey, let's seek it. Let's get it. I mean, like, there, there, I could, I could give you guys a whole, a whole plan. We could whole, a whole work out a whole steps for you. But I mean, the the only thing when you're thinking about pursuing, it, it's just, let's do it. Amen. There, there's really, when we're in Christ and we're in faith, there's really nothing holding us back from receiving all that God has for us, except for ourselves. Amen. Whenever a prophetic word came right in the Old Testament, right? I mean, Joel, right? It was a prophetic word. Do the, it, repent, turn back to God. And it all depended on that individual, whether or not they were going to respond to God's word and God's invitation. Jesus again says, right, that, that he's a good father and he desires to give spiritual gifts. He desires to give his Holy Spirit. What, what or to who? To those who ask. Joel said that you needed to turn, you needed to repent, turn your heart back to God. He would restore and then his spirit would come. Turn to God. Come back to that contrast in uh, verse 18. Don't be drunk in wine. Don't be caught up in man-made things. Don't get caught up in other pursuits. Don't get caught up with overwhelming things. Don't get caught up with it. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Pursue after the things above. Set your mind on heavenly things. What you set your mind on, you receive. My old pastor, he used to say, whatever you feed grows. Let's get it. Let's get it. I'm going to invite Ethan and the team to come up. And this morning, man, nothing else. We just need to spend some time saying, yes, God. Yes, God. I want all that you have for me. God, I, I want your spirit. God, I, I want the things from above. I, God, I receive all that you have for me. God, it, maybe this is, a, this is a moment of repentance for you. You say, oh God, forgive me because I've, I've set my things on manly things. I've set my things on drunken things. I, I set my things on, uh, on my eyes and I have pursued other things. And, and you know what? I, I, I can say this with confidence. I know you're not satisfied with it. If you're not getting Jesus, Jesus says, come to me, I'll give you water, and you'll be satisfied. I know if you are in this room and you haven't been pursuing the things of God, you're not satisfied with what you're getting. It's the truth of the Word of God. And so this morning, I would invite us all to come. Come and receive all that God has for us this morning. Father, as we respond to your Word this morning, we are grateful. We are grateful for the opportunity that we have to pursue you. That you are a Father that with open arms is ready to, to pour out upon us your Spirit. And you ask of us this morning, will you come? Will you ask? And so this morning, Father, I pray with hearts rendered, God, that we would come. We would receive all that you have for us. And Lord, your Spirit be poured out upon us. In Jesus' name. And if you're here this morning, you say, yes, I need, to, I need to do some repenting. I want to come and again say to the Lord, I want all that you have for us. I want to invite you to come and pray at the altar. I want to be up here to, to pray with you, but let's spend a few moments saying, God, yes, all that you have.